and welcome to my series of short videos in which we discuss how the Arduino interacts with various electronic components. Yes, in less than 15 minutes we'll go over the basics, how they can be used, hints, tips, tricks and traps. And hello, today we're going to be talking about transistors. They're the things that can help us in the Arduino world, whether it's a little tiny one like that or a bigger chunky one like this. So we can control peripherals and other devices, things that would just make the Arduino let the magic smoke escape and that would be the end of your Arduino. So let's have a look how transistors work in a very general fashion and only from an Arduino perspective. Let me get my whiteboard out and uh, show you why I've got um, switches on this mat here as well. So what we have here is the symbol for a transistor and you'll find this symbol in schematics or circuit diagrams. And there are various types of transistor but we're going to concentrate on this one and this one's known as an NPN transistor. So negative, positive, negative, but we never say that of course. It's just to do with the construction internally of the transistor. And the full name of a transistor is a bipolar junction transistor. And once again that refers to the fact we have two negatively charged areas inside this transistor and a positively charged one, hence the NPN. However, we don't want to know all about that. It's just a little bit too complex, isn't it? But let's name these three leads that go into a transistor. The one at the top, like this, is always going to be the collector. The one at the bottom here is always going to be the emitter. And a little tip for you, where the arrow is shown like that, sort of the direction, that's where it emits the current down this leg here. And this one over here is the base. So those are the three names of the leads that go into a BJT NPN type transistor. Now, of course, we can't say that every single transistor is going to be the same, but it's pretty much these days that you get general purpose NPN BJT transistors. And this is what they look like on the whole. They're sort of semicircular like this with a flat area. And the outline, this actual shape is known as a T092. And you'll see these on AliExpress and Banggood expressed as an NPN BJT T092 general purpose transistor. And this one here, you can see I've written on it because that's where you'll find the actual name of it. I've named it here as a 2N2222A because this is one of the very, very popular ones. There are others and I'll show you at the end of the video. And the three leads going in here, you think, okay, I understand the symbol shows three leads with three names B, C and E, base collector emitter. How do I know which three uh, they are on here? Good question. And basically the only way to be absolutely sure is to look at the data sheet. Basically you type into Google 2N2222A pin out and you will get a whole raft of information. Thousands of pages that show you exactly which way they go round. As it happens in this case, this is the emitter, this is the base and this is the collector. Generally, the base is the middle one, but the emitter and collector on different transistors sometimes swap places. So watch out for that. That's a little bit of a trap. Now, the important thing to notice about this particular transistor, being an NPN, is the polarity of the leads and where current's going to flow. Now, in an NPN, the collector is always going to be positive in relation to the emitter, and the emitter is generally connected to ground. So your Arduino's ground will be the same as this ground. The collector here might be plus 5 volts, but it could be higher, and we'll see about that in a minute. And the base is always positive in relation to the emitter. It's a very low voltage, probably about 0.7 volts, but it can be higher. And the amount of current that flows down there is pretty small. In this particular transistor's case, we must never allow more than five milliamps to flow down there because otherwise the transistor will burn out. And in general use, we tend to let far less current flow down here, perhaps one milliamp. So what is all this current flow doing? Well, basically the transistor is what's known as a current amplifier. So if current flows down here through the base into the internal workings, that will invoke and allow more current to flow in this direction from your main plus 5 volts or whatever it is you've got to connect it up to. Let's assume that's connected to VCC for now. So 1 milliamp might throw down here, but you might then get 100 milliamps flowing in this direction, through here, down there, out the other side, and to ground. So you could say this transistor has amplified that current of 1 milliamp to 100, so it must be amplifying 100 times. 
and that's what's known as the gain of a transistor. Not particularly important from a, an Arduino point of view, we can usually forget that because we are driving this transistor so hard that it will always allow the maximum amount of current to flow through here. We'll come on to a real life example in just a minute. So from an Arduino point of view, we will be using this type of transistor a lot. There are, however, others. Let's just have a look at their symbols, but we're not going to be looking at them today. So here are the symbols for two further types of transistor, which we're not going to be looking at today. This one is still a BJT, but as you can see, the arrow on here on the emitter is in fact reversed. And instead of MPN, it's a PNP, and we're not going to look at that one today at all. This is a MOSFET. It's a much more modern type transistor and is extremely useful in the Arduino environment. But we'll do a whole video on this one, but not today. Now, there might be a couple of other little symbols you might see, but we're certainly not interested in those in an Arduino environment usually. So if this transistor, the NPN BJT transistor, is so important in the Arduino world, what on earth are we using it for? Let's have a practical example. Here we have our transistor, exactly the same as shown before. Here we have our Arduino. Now, this might be a Nano, might be an Uno, but let's pretend it's an Uno for now. And as we know, on the Arduino, we have various GPIO pins, and they can output a certain amount of current. Normally, we try and limit the output current to 20 milliamps, which means if you've got something at the other end of here that takes more than 20 milliamps, you've got a problem, really, in getting that to work. And if you try and connect something up directly to this pin here on the Arduino that, say, requires 100 milliamps, you will have overloaded it, and it will burn out. So now we come to the transistor to the rescue. Basically, the transistor can take a much smaller amount of current than even the 20, as we said before, probably 1 milliamp, something like that. And it can drive, say, a heavy-duty bulb. So if we had a heavy-duty bulb here, or a series of bulbs, like, you know, 20 LEDs, something like that, that would be going up to VCC. Now, let's assume that these, this symbol here, which is the symbol for a bulb, is representing more than one. Let's assume it's representing, I don't know, 10 or 20 LEDs, and the total amount of current required is 100 milliamps to come down there. This would go to ground, and the symbol for ground is like that, and the Arduino also is connected to ground, and of course it's connected to VCC plus 5 volts. Now whilst the Arduino can only produce 20 milliamps, and at a push 40 milliamps if you're really going to risk things. It still cannot provide enough current here to drive this series of bulbs or a single high wattage bulb. So what we do, we let the GPIO drive the base of this transistor. Now we don't connect it up directly from here to here because otherwise 20 milliamps or more would try to flow in this direction which would not only burn out the transistor, it could very well burn out your Arduino as well. So in there, what we're going to put is a resistor. Now, the actual value of the resistor is calculated using Ohm's law, which we'll cover in a separate video, because it is quite important for us as Arduinites to understand at least a little bit about Ohm's law. So to work out exactly what the value of this resistor is, we have to do a very, very small amount of maths. No, 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 don't stop. Listen, listen, it's easy, it's easy. We know that this transistor can amplify the current coming into the base times 100. And we know we want 100 milliamps or so flowing down here to light up this rather large bulb or series of bulbs. So therefore, we need one milliamp to come in through the base, don't we? One milliamp times 100 equals 100 milliamps. And by Ohm's law, which as I say, we will be covering later on, to get one milliamp from the Arduino into the transistor, we really need five kilo ohms. That's 5,000 ohms. Now, five kilo ohm resistors are not what is called a standard value. We're more likely to find 4.7 kilo ohms which is absolutely fine. It just means slightly more current will flow through here. And the difference is almost insignificant. We can still call it one milliamp. So that's great. We've now worked out what resistor value we need as a standard value, 4.7k ohms. One milliamp will flow down here, allowing 100 milliamps to flow down here through this transistor. And we know this is safe because we've looked up on the data sheet that a 2N2222A can take 800 milliamps. Great. 
I think we're sort of done there, aren't we? Mm, not quite. Now, I said not quite because what if this bulb here, or series of bulbs, doesn't need the same voltage at VCC? It needs a higher voltage. Let's say, for example, 12 volts. Well, the poor Arduino cannot provide 12 volts anywhere on that board. Not unless you plug in an adapter into the barrel jack and supply 12 volts. Then the Arduino will take its 5 volts that it needs, and the 12 volts is available on the V-in pin on the Arduino, which is positioned somewhere around here. So if we supply 12 volts to the Arduino, we could actually get 12 volts up here if we wanted. Let's see how we'd change this circuit then to accommodate that. Well, the first thing we do is get rid of this VCC, because it's not. And what we want up there is 12 volts. That's great. That will come in from the V-in pin of the Arduino board. So effectively, what we're doing, we're having a 12 volt supply now coming in. And of course, the 12 volt will have a ground. Well, the ground is connected to the ground of the transistor and the Arduino. They must all be on the same ground. This is known as common ground. Any piece of equipment you connect to the Arduino must have its ground commoned like this. So they're all connected. The 12 volts is connected directly to the VN pin, and we're going to take that to supply our bulb. And also, there's a little bit of magic on the Arduino board that converts that 12 volts into 5 volts here. So we have 5 volts there, 12 volts there, and there's a little regulator on board, and it will just convert it for us. So now we can run a much higher powered load here, whether it's bulbs, motors, fans, whatever we want. And the transistor is our saviour because it acts as a switch. When you write digital write high on this pin, this transistor is going to get 1 milliamps through this resistor and now 100 milliamps or whatever this requires through here as a switch. So effectively, you could almost view that transistor now as the symbol for a switch, exactly the same. Now, transistors are used for lots of things, and a switch is just one use. But in the Arduino world, that is exactly what we mainly use them for, a switch. They're either on or they're off. There's no in-between state. And if by some misfortune you happen to get this transistor in an in-between state, not quite on, not quite off, you'll find that this will get extremely hot indeed and possibly burn out. But we don't want to go there in the Arduino world. We want it on or off, and it's a switch that we're looking for. Right, I think perhaps we need to demonstrate this now on a breadboard and just see how we can drive a much higher bulb load using our 12 volt input and using a simple 2N2222A double two, double two transistor. Great, let's have a go. So here we have a breadboard with the transistor on that I told you about, the 2N2222A. Two double two, double two we have one base resistor. Uh, we have plus, minus, and the base resistor switch on off, which comes from pin 11 all the way over here. Now this bulb is a chunky bulb. It's actually from a car from years gone by. So it's a 12 volt bulb, three watts. So it's obviously not gonna light up from five volts. Nothing had happened. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna plug in, instead of this five volt USB cable in here, as you perhaps might normally do, we're gonna plug in this rather beefy 12 volt supply into here now when we plug that into there i'm taking the output from v in on your arduino board which is the same voltage of whatever is coming in here so that's a direct link from the v in here the voltage in to that pin because i don't want five volts over here i want the full 12 volts in order that this bulb here lights up so let's plug it in and just see if the led lights up right plugged in oh look there we are so there we have a double blink uh, on a 12 volt bulb which would require far more current than what the Arduino could supply and indeed far more voltage than the Arduino could supply in itself. We're not running at 5 volts remember, we're running at 12 and uh, everything seems to be fine. So this is how you can run from a different voltage. Now here I've got a little box of transistors, cunningly marked transistors and uh, if we just open that up you'll see that there's well, a range of, well, seemingly identical transistors in here. But um, I've taken a little bit of time and trouble, and I've actually marked them all up, as you can see. So I wrote down what each one was, whether it's NPN, PNP, and the pinouts. So, yeah, it's probably worthwhile doing this. Let's see where I got these from. 
Here we are. So this is Banggood and AliExpress and even Amazon probably has them. A bit more expensive than Amazon, but four dollars and three cents to the UK. It's free shipping. Four dollars and three cents. Pretty good. So there we are. That's transistors for you. Now there is a different sort of transistor, as I mentioned before, the MOSFET, which works even better than this one. And we'll discuss that in a future video. Thanks for watching. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.